Pacific Midi from the uh, University of Rene and the UNIU uh, Abdul Dhabi. So he's going to talk about come theory for active scal scalar equations. Please, Professor. Okay, Lee. thank you, Marcelo, for this uh, introduction. Thank you for all the organizers for this nice conference for this online conference and it's a pleasure to participate and I apologize in advance for those who I wasn't able to attend their lecture due to some constraints. So uh, my lecture today will be around KM theory and how to apply KM theory for active scalar equations. And before, before starting to give you the equations and to discuss what we can do there, just to make some general principle for uh, this kind of mode. So we'll deal with Hamiltonian uh, equations. Uh, and we want to, and for this Hamiltonian equation, we don't know if we have a global existence for, uh, for our solution. So what we uh, expect to do is to find uh, stationary solutions. And when we find, and we'll see that we can find many and many stationary solutions. And uh, the idea is to explore in a small neighborhood there, if we can construct time periodic solutions, and by this way, we can generate global solutions. So this is the first part. And the second part, when we succeed in this program, is to see if we can generate quasi-periodic solutions, which in some sense, we excite many frequencies. And we see if uh, what we excite at the linear level will survive at the nonlinear level. This is especially the main task of KM theory uh, to see if this will, will be possible or not. And uh, the delicate question, when we are looking for stationary solution, we can find many and many. So if we take one, we can find around many stationary solution. And, and the, the delicate point is to see how to make a selection uh, of your uh, point. It is not an isolated point and how to select it. And we can find different way uh, to select it from the topological structure. We'll see that we can find different configuration uh, we can eliminate uh, from this uh, aspect some many uh, stationary solutions, or we can, for example, uh, decide uh, through the symmetry, you can prescribe the symmetry, and by this way, we can eliminate in order to reduce more and more uh, this uh, uh, stationary solution and to see around if you can find periodic or quasi periodic solution. So, let me, uh, this is the general principle. So, let me start with this. Uh, with uh, this uh, simple and elementary equation. This is a transport. So we'll deal with the on with nonlinear transport equation. This is my equation. So uh, here my unknown is theta. So theta is a scalar function depending in time and in space. So this is my theta. And theta is affected by velocity field V. And the velocity field V here is incompressible. So with the gradient pair of some what we call stream function. And this stream function psi is in itself is related to uh, your solution theta. And the connection can be done for several uh, modes arising in fluid dynamics with uh, a convolution kernel. So psi here can be associated to your solution theta through convolution kernel. And the structure uh, of the kernel depends on uh, the mode that we are dealing with. Uh, uh, so this equation, this is a nonlinear equation, and this equation is non-local due to this uh, relationship between uh, theta, your solution, and the stream function. For example, for earlier equation, this is standard and well-known equation in two-dimensional uh, case. This is the kernel, this is the logarithmic kernel, and you can uh, uh, find the velocity according to the savar law. Uh, and another equ equation, which is well known now uh, in the literature, is the surface Cauchy-Joseph equation or the generalized surface Cauchy-Joseph equation. And in this case, we should uh, change a little bit your potential here. This is not the logarithmic potential, but this will be uh, uh, this uh, kind of singular potential one over x power alpha. And alpha here uh, is a parameter between 0, 1 or between 0, 2. And the constant C alpha is connected to gamma function. And this is uh, the model that we want to explore and to study. We have different now uh, points that we can explore for this kind of equation, a local well poseness, uh, blow up, global existence, and so on. And for alpha equal to zero, just to remark, when we take this equation for alpha equal to zero, we, uh, we come back to other equation. And this uh, model was introduced by uh, Cordoba 
in order to interpolate between earlier equation and the surface casuistic equation, which corresponds here to this exponent alpha equal to one. So alpha equal to one is quasi just equation, and uh, this model here is an interpolation between two extreme geophysical models. Uh, okay, in this slide, I will just uh, comment quickly what, what is done in the literature and uh, isolated some results. I apologize, I can't mention all the results in this direction. This is not the goal here, but just to mention some, some results. Uh, for earlier equations, it is known uh, that we have a global existence for a classical solution. What I mean by classical solution is to start with initial data, which is smooth, sufficient smooth, let us say in sublevel space HS, for example, and S sufficient uh, large or in holder space. And for uh, earlier question, it is well known that we have a global existence for a classical solution. And the main ingredient for that is this conservation law. For earlier equation, the vorticity is conserved is bounded in L infinity. We have a transport equation, and all the, at least in the formal way, all the LP nodes are, con are, are bound or conserved. And the uh, limiting case, which is L infinity, the vorticity is bound, and this is sufficient to rule out a blow up for early equation. However, when we move to the surface quasi just equation, the situation is completely different. We can still get the local well posts for uh, in superlevel spaces, but we don't know if the maximal time existence is uh, finite or not, because the law, the conservation law that we have is at the level of L infinity, and the scaling for getting global existence is, is much more higher. Should move to uh, hold the space with uh, positive regularity, and this is and for this reason, this is a delicate uh, problem. Uh, we can't get global existence from uh, just from the law uh, conservation law. And earlier equation sounds in this case as a critical model for global existence. When we move a little bit alpha strictly positive, we don't know. And we have some, there are some numerical simulations showing that we can, uh, that there are some possibility of uh, blow up. And uh, there is a second category of solution that uh, in lit the literature, they are well studied, uh, what we call Udovich uh, type solutions. Udovich type solutions is simply if we uh, if we take vorticity which is integrable and bounded formally we can uh, l1 is bound l infinity and we expect to construct a weak solution for the equation and this is the case but the important point is that we get uniqueness here. so the uniqueness for earlier equation uh, is connected to the fact that your vorticity is bounded and the velocity field is not Lipschitz but is almost Lipschitz slow Lipschitz and uh, I think uh, this is just the important point for early equation to get global existence. However, when we take alpha strictly positive, we have no uh, similar result for uh, uh, surface quasi adjustment equation. Uh, we can, uh, especially for the uniqueness, the same problem, the same defect for global existence uh, seems here uh, appears for uh, Udvich solution. We have no the uniqueness. The uniqueness uh, we require um, we require more than than uh, so the we have no the Lipschitz. So we require more for the uniqueness, and we can get uh, weak solutions. This uh, we have weak solution. This need proved weak solution L two, and we can get below L two no uniqueness. Uh, but what what we are interested here is uh, to uh, specify more uh, the solution that we want to explore, and this will be the vortex patches. So the vortex patches, with which solution can be uh, implemented for SQG, but we'll see that for the vortex patch, this specific case, specific case of uh, bounded function, we can uh, show that we have existence and uniqueness in the class of vortex patch. So what we mean of vortex patch is simply to start with initial data, which is concentrated, uniformly concentrated in some domain. D. So this is one in some domain D. Take, so take some domain D, one and zero. And we want to see if we can uh, track the evolution of your domain and prove uh, local well poses. And how to uh, how to proceed is to uh, write the contour dynamics equation. So we can parameterize your boundary, and we can find an integral differential equation governing the time evolution of your boundary. And this is exactly the equation that we find. We find that the time evolution of your parameterization, this is Lagrangian parameterization, 
parameterization is given by uh, this uh, no local and nonlinear part here. And you can imagine that you can implement fixed point theory and prove a local well posing if there when your boundary is sufficient smooth. Uh, for earlier equation, it is now uh, known this is uh, this result obtained by Schumann in 1993 that if we start a boundary which is sufficient smooth, more than C1, then we propagate this information for any type. And we have another uh, proof uh, formulated by Bertuzzi and Constantin the same period. And uh, we can, uh, for SQG alpha, we can do the same thing. We can proceed in this, at least for the local well poses, we can prove that we have, we can propagate locally in time or regularity for more than C1, we, we require more. Uh, but we don't know if the maximum time of existence is finite or not. So we have exactly the same, uh, the same, uh, the same difficulty with the classical solution here. We don't know if we have global well poisons in this uh, with the, the contour dynamics equation. And it seems that for uh, some, uh, there are some scenario for, for blow up. This is not really blow up, but this is a, a formation of a collision. This is. We have some examples formulated by Kislev, Rizik, uh, Yao, and Zlatos. We can take uh, uh, different patches. And this is, uh, there is an hyperbolic point, different patch, and they will collide in finite time. So there is a collision between the patch. But this is not uh, a self, uh, sing self singularity that we can. This is not exactly one patch, and this patch will develop its own singularity. This is just like emerging, we have two parts and they will evolve one toward the other one. And they will, uh, this interaction will force uh, the two parts to collide in finite And this result was extended by Gansido and Patel for and to cover more a range for alpha. Now let me move to a, a, a time periodic solution. So here we can generate uh, locally in time, this uh, patch, we have a patch, and this patch will uh, will have one zero, and there is some deformation, the area is conserved. And we want to see if we can now uh, create or construct global, uh, global solutions. And if we want, this is my observation at the beginning, if you want to generate a periodic solution, we want to localize them around stationary solution. And we have different, different, uh, uh, different, uh, perspective to explore. We have three class of, uh, let us say, stationary solution. The first one is radial patches. If we start with the disk or an annulus, this is stationary solution. And we want to see if we can explore uh, the periodic solution around. There are different results in the last uh, decades. Uh, and we have several names here. Uh, we can generate many of them. I will come back to this discussion later. And another much more delicate one is radial profiles. If we take any uh, any initial distribution, which is radial, this is such a solution. And if this is not uniform, like uh, the patches, this is so delicate to find uh, a global, uh, uh, to find periodic solution there. And we, uh, for early equation, we have some results. And for uh, for uh, surface position equation, we have some results. And there are some uh, proofs, uh, computer assisted proofs. The spectral study is very delicate and so on, and this is not uh, an easy task. And the third one, which is, I think, much more easier, is the point vortex system. When we start with point vortex system, we know uh, what happens for the points, and we want to see if we can de-singularize the points and construct smooth profile or patch, pro patch of profile around these points. And this is, was explored by many, uh, many authors in the last decades. So let me uh, uh, now focus in rotating patches. So periodic solution in my case will be a rotating patch. So we want to see if we can generate periodic solution in the patch form. And the periodic solution will be a rigid periodic solution. Uh, so we look for uh, the solution with the characteristic function of some domain and your domain will rotate about here, about the center of mass and the center of mass will be the origin. So we want to see if we can generate a patches and the domain will rotate uniform around its center. Okay, you can insert this and that. This is an and that. We prescribe the dynamics. You insert in your uh, evolution equation. 
and you will find this stationary equation. So we find at the end the stationary equation here, because we are in some sense, you can understand this when you, you have a patch and the patch is rotating, you have a patch like this, and the patch is rotating. So you are fixed at the frame of the patch, you are rotating with the patch. And when you rotate with the patch, the patch is fixed. And, uh, uh, and what you observe here, this is the, the, the relative velocity that you are computing in the frame of the patch, and you should be tangential to, uh, the, uh, to the boundary here. So this is the equation, the relative velocity should be tangential to, uh, should be tangential to your patch. And this is only the constraint. Can you find domains when you compute your velocity field and you compute this quantity, this will be tangential to your patch. Okay, uh, let's see if we can do something in, the, in this direction. So when we start with the disk and the analysis, this is automatically satisfied. So your equation here is automatically satisfied when we have a disk or analysis, and this satisfied for any omega. And we want to see if you can bifurcate in some sense. So this is the main, I think, key to find periodic solution is to see if you can bifurcate from this trivial solution and you can use this omega as a parameter of your bifurcation. So this will not will not bifurcate for any omega. There are some specific omega related to some uh, to this, some spectrum, to the spectrum of some operator, and uh, we can prove that we uh, that uh, there is uh, non-trivial solutions. Uh, for earlier equation, let me uh, just mention that for earlier equation there are a lot of discussion on, on this direction, and we have an explicit first. We have an explicit example uh, discovered by Kirchhoff. If we start with any ellipse your ellipse will rotate uniformly. And this is, I think, an interesting, uh, and this is the only explicit solution, at least for this kind of, of model that you know explicitly for early equation, the ellipse will rotate and we know exactly the angular velocity, which is related to the semi-axis. Uh, there is, uh, Dima and Zabuski uh, found numerically uh, that we can find some of them with different symmetry. They found that we can have something like a triangle here, one zero and something like a square pentagon and they said okay numerically we can observe that we find some patches uh, regular uh, polygons rotating uniformly and the proof was given by uh, some years later by Berbia using bifurcation tools bifurcation and complex analysis tools and this is the result that we can reformulate in this way so if we uh, so uh, we can find a countable family. So M here, we fix M. M is larger than two. M is the symmetry. So we fix the symmetry and the symmetry like your polygon of M size. So M is exactly uh, the M fold symmetry. And when you fix your symmetry, you can find a branch of solution bifurcating from the disk, the disk at this angular velocity. Take the first one is, for the symmetry three, four, and so on. For the symmetry three, this is your curve. So we bifurcate. And when we are somewhere here, you capture non trivial rotating uh, patch with uh, symmetry three. And this is true for any point on this branch. And you do the same thing for the symmetry four. At any point of this, uh, of this curve, you find rotating patch and so on. Uh, and when the symmetry is increasing, there is a barrier here. Uh, one half, so one half is this barrier. We can't. So we have some concentration. Your curve will concent will accumulate, uh, will accumulate to this uh, critical point one half. Uh, so with my collaborator Joan Mathieu and Joan Verdira, we prove that close to the disk. What what we mean by close to the disk means that simply you are in this strip. When we are in this strip, uh, what we uh, construct is a smooth C infinity. So we prove that the rotating patch are a C infinity. And later, uh, Castro, Cordoba, Gomez, Serrano proved that they are more than C infinity, they are analytic. And uh, Asainia, Masmudi, Willer proved that uh, they are analytic and studied the global, uh, the global bifurcation. Uh, there, are, uh, there are different open problems for this uh, for this uh, bifurcation diagram. The first one is 
if you follow uh, each branch and you reach this uh, maximal uh, distant points or distant points, what you observe numerically that we can create singularity and we have corners of angle pi over two. And this is an open problem to uh, prove this for other equation. If we can generate uh, uh, a singular rotating solution with angle pi over two. And the second one is there is this uh, if you look for, uh, there is this spectral gap. We have a spectral gap here. We don't see any, before, uh, any, any rotating solution. We don't know if uh, this is true or not. So there is this uh, spectral gap, which is complicated. And there are many uh, recent discussion about the stationary solution uh, by uh, Gomez Serrano, Yao Yao, and so on. So maybe I will say two words later. So let me know uh, what happened. This for other equation, but what uh, can you uh, establish the same thing for the generalized surface for the equation? And the result is yes. And this was done by uh, myself and Asenia. And we proved that when alpha is between zero and one, we can exactly generate the same thing. We can generate rotating patches with any symmetry larger than two, uh, like earlier equation. And we can compute exactly the point of the bifurcation. And yet you can see the point of the bifurcation here is uh, connected to the symmetry M and to your exponent alpha is the exponent of your operator. Uh, and uh, this is uh, through this quotient of gamma function. So gamma here is the standard gamma function and we can compute uh, easy. We'll see later when we move to the quasi-periodic solution that we can use this richness of uh, gamma function in order to implement quasi-periodic solution uh, for uh, this kind of mode. Uh, and in, my, in our proof, there is some limitation. We didn't succeed to implement this for the surface produced uh, solution, which correspond to alpha equal to one. And the Castro, uh, Castro Cordoba and Gomez Serrano proved that we can extend this result by this uh, critical point alpha equal to one and move from one to two and prove exactly the same thing. And they prove more that uh, the boundary is uh, analytic. And the proof is, is quite uh, the proof. Uh, the principle of the proof is similar to uh, is similar to earlier equation with bifurcation proofs. Uh, let me say two words about the shapes. What, because there are different. Uh, now, when we move to the self quadratic equation, we find that there is something uh, completely new compared to earlier equation. For example, for the two folds for the symmetry two. For earlier, for earlier equation, this is the ellip, uh, Kirchhoff ellipses. And Kirchhoff ellipses, when you, so this is Kirchhoff ellipse from the bifurcation uh, diagram, we bifurcate, we still uh, an ellipse, at the end will uh, we'll shrink to a segment. So this is the final state, the final state when you follow the uh, bifurcating curve. However, for uh, surface quadratic equation, this is the two folds. This is what you observe. So what we see here, is the, the red one, the red one here is this limiting shape. So, uh, uh, and we expect from numerical point of view, this is much more delicate, but we expect that we can extrapolate and this limiting shape is to find this singularity, uh, dumbbell, shape, uh, dumbbell shape structure here, and we have singularity between. Uh, just some comments we can, uh, this is the bifurcation diagram compared, uh, this is a comparison between the different uh, uh, bifur uh, bifurcating diagram. This is early equation, this is alpha equal to zero. This is alpha zero one and this is alpha zero nine. And we see that we start to get this spectral uh, gap. We have this spectral gap. But when you move to uh, alpha uh, close to one, you see that we have no spectral gap. So this means that you can find omega here, omega, and we can find different shapes or different shapes with different symmetry rotating with the same angular velocity. And this is, uh, and this is uh, at least uh, some observation from a numerical point of view, but we are far away to prove any, uh, any result in this direction. 
So numerics here uh, is suggesting some uh, some kind of a question that we can explore, but I think up to now we have no sufficient material to go to the final, to, to go to explore more uh, the phase portrait and to understand this kind of, of overlapping between uh, the branches. Uh, for the doubly connected V states, I can say some words for the doubly connected V states. This is for what's for uh, the disk. We can explore the same thing for the annulus. If we take the annulus, we change the topology here. We take this, the doubly connected, uh, we take one, zero, zero. This stationary solution and what we uh, prove that we can bifurcate in a similar case, like the simply connected case, like the disk. Uh, the first results in this direction, uh, uh, was established by myself, Dulahoz, Matteo, and Verdera, and we proved for earlier equation that we can bifurcate, and the bifurcation diagram is much more rich than the simply connected case. For a given symmetry, we can find two branches, not only one. If we fix the symmetry, we can find two branches, one with plus and plus, and the second one with minus something like this. So we have much more richness in the bifurcating, uh, bifurcation diagram. Uh, uh, and we uh, approved exactly the same thing for uh, self, for general surface position equation with De La Hose and Dasainia. Uh, and for the critical case, alpha is one was uh, proved by Renault and we proved that the boundary is analytic. And, the, and there is, uh, I think, a nice discussion about stationary solution. Uh, a stationary solution uh, from uh, for the surface quasi geostrophic solution here we have two ang uh, angle angular velocity omega m plus and omega m minus and at some regime omega m minus will be negative and from numerical point of view we suggest that you can find no trivial doubly connected stationary solution for a surface for general surface quasi geostrophic equation and this was proved by gomez Siran. And uh, there are also some uh, nice discussion about rigidity of stationary solutions uh, with respect to the angular velocity. I think I have no sufficient time to explore more of this kind of, uh, of exploration, but uh, let me now... Uh, it's okay. So just some comments about what we can observe for the doubly connected case compared to the simply connected case concerning the limiting V states or the end of the bifurcating branch. We have different, uh, different scenario that are much more interesting, I think, suggestion by uh, numerics, by experiments. Uh, we can find the singularity, but here it seems that for the doubly connected case, when we follow the branch, we can find the singularities at the, uh, the interior curve or at the exterior curve, but never uh, in the same for in the interior and at the exterior curve. So the singularity is some selection, which uh, which is done. The singularity will uh, will be uh, only on one uh, piece of your uh, of your patch. Uh, and for this is for Euler, and this is for uh, SQG alpha. And for SQG alpha, we can find also similar thing. You can find the, this is for fourfold for the symmetry four with some uh, specific value of uh, alpha. Alpha is zero nine and B here is zero two. So we have nice discussion about the limiting shapes. And this is, uh, I repeat, this is uh, just numerical experiments. There is no any uh, analytical proof of what we are observing. Okay, now let me move to the second part of this lecture concerning quasi-periodic solutions. And before that, I should mention what does it mean or fix the, uh, this concept of quasi-periodicity. So if we take a function, so the quasi-periodicity here will be in time. And theta here is your special variable in my case, and this special variable will be on the, tor the torus. And we take a function depending on two variable, and we say that this quasi-periodic in time. If you can find the frequency omega, uh, this vector of frequency omega 1, omega 2, omega d, rd, and some profile r, r hat, and this profile will be periodic in all the variables, such that you can describe your function in this way. 
So this means yeah, that, that now for periodic function, you need only one frequency. And for quasi-periodic function, you need a finite number of frequencies to describe your function. And here we assume that your vector frequency is no resonant in the following way, that when we take any, uh, any rational combination, this is not zero. And this is very important to implement KM theory as we will uh, discuss later. Uh, we can generate some explicit examples of uh, uh, quasi-periodic functions like this. So we take, uh, you super, we take a vector here, which is given, and you oscillate your vector by exponential i omega n t. So this means that you have different direction, different vectors, independent, and they are rotating. H1 is rotating independent of the other one. And when you look for uh, this sum now, we get something which is quasi-periodic. And if you want to imagine your curve, the curve given by the time evolution of this one, this will be like a curve, this blue one, and this blue one is enrolled in this uh, end, to end towards. So we have this uh, this finite dimension towards, and we have a curve, and this curve is 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 supported in this uh, in this uh, towards. So uh, let me explain for uh, just one important, I think, uh, delicate point in KM theory. KM theory is Kolmogorov Arnold Moser, formed by Kolmogorov Arnold Moser. And, uh, and typically, is when we want to solve a differential equation. Let, let, let me start with this one this simple differential equation F prime is uh, G. So we give you a G is a quasi periodic function. Uh, in the following way that G is some function applied uh, capital J apply uh, capital G applied to omega T and capital G is periodic and if we uh, want to solve F prime is G in the, in the periodic setting you can write in for with the Fourier expansion and you see that we require this one this is the coefficient in, in Fourier size omega scalar K times the Fourier coefficient of your function coincides with this one and we want to invert if you want to invert this one, so we require that omega uh, dot uh, k is different from zero. This is the first one, k is different from zero. And when k equal to zero, you require this compatibility. So uh, the average of your function should be vanishing. And when k is different from zero, if you want to invert this one, we require omega dot k is different from zero. So we see at least why we need that your vector uh, is not uh, is non resonant in order to invert this differential equation. And this is not sufficient. Uh, if you want to make analysis, this is not sufficient. This is not sufficient because omega dot k can go faster to zero with some uncontrolled way. So we want to uh, prescribe how, uh, this is the small divisor problem, we want to prescribe how uh, this degeneracy will occur when, uh, uh, when we approach zero. And this is a diafontine uh, condition, so we can restrict we can re restrict omega, for example, uh, with this constraint. And when we do that, you can invert your differential equation, but we invert your loss of regularity. So we lose tau regularity here. And you, the price, we have a second price that with respect to the coefficient here, this is like small amplitude that we insert. With respect to this one, we have a second loss, gamma minus one. So the, uh, the goal uh, here is to explore if we can generate quasi-periodic solution for uh, generalized surface procedure equation. But before that, let me uh, rewrite my equations in terms of polar coordinates. Uh, this is much more, I think, uh, this is much more convenient to uh, implement later for quasi-periodic solution. So here, my, uh, we have a shape, my shape. And I will parameterize with the polar coordinates. R t theta, exponential i theta, this is your boundary. And R here, we are close to the equilibrium state. The equilibrium state is the unit disk. The unit disk is stationary, is radial, it is stationary. And we want to perturb this unit disk in order to see if we can generate quasi-periodic solution. So here we introduce this small variable R. And when we write the equation, we can make some uh, some uh, computation with some simplification, and you find this uh, differential, this uh, this equation. This is the evolution of your uh, radius r, 
and uh, we find this uh, nonlinear structure and this non-local structure as well. And what which is uh, important to mention that we can reformulate this as a Hamiltonian equation. And this is very important if you want to explore quasi-periodic solution, we want to write this as a Hamiltonian equation. And we can find this is exactly the Hamiltonian equation. And this is your Hamiltonian. The Hamiltonian is nothing but your energy. Uh, and we can make, uh, we can check this. There are some properties uh, for this. Uh, when we write in this side, there are some properties. Okay, the trivial one is that R equal to zero is a solution. This is the equilibrium state. And uh, we can also see the symmetry. Also, there is the reversibility of your system. This is a Hamiltonian system. And you have this reversibility. If we start with the solution R, and we exchange t uh, by minus t and theta by minus theta, you get a solution. And this is very important to fix the symmetry. This is what I said at the beginning. Sometimes you should eliminate many things to reduce your kernel, and we can use the symmetry. And this is uh, for this kind of equation. We can use the reversibility in order to eliminate many pathological perturbations. And the average is fixed here. And the average is fixed like before. For the example before, we need the average to be zero. And this is what we will use in order to generate quasi-periodic solution to restrict uh, the solution to be with zero average. Uh, and the uh, last comment, this is exactly the phase space. So when we want to find the solution, we want to find the solution with respect to the symmetry and with zero average. And this is the structure. This will help you to fix your function space how to uh, how to design in order to implement later KM theory and national zero scheme. Okay, so uh, the main, uh, when we want to implement KM theory, uh, the main uh, uh, delicate problem is to see if you can invert your operator, the linearized operator, not at the equilibrium state, because you will see at the equilibrium state, we can lose regularity and it's not invertible, but you can invert around your equilibrium state with some loss. Uh, so we want to see if, uh, first the structure of your linearized operator. So this is the structure when you compute your linearized operator. This is exactly the structure. You have two parts. The first part is the transport part, this one. And V here is connected to your parameterization R. So this is a function, V. And the second one is a compact operator here, K. And K is exactly this one. Uh, and what happens at the equilibrium state? We want to see at the equilibrium state if we can uh, at least for at the, uh, at the linear level, we can generate quasi-periodic solutions. So uh, when we uh, when you replace R by zero in the preceding, you find that your function V now is a constant, but depending on your parameter alpha, we see that this alpha is very important. And the second one is that your, comparator, your compact operator now is a Fourier multiplier. And what is uh, this operator, d alpha minus one? I am using the notation of fraction Laplacian, but it's not the standard fraction Laplacian. It's a modified fraction Laplacian. We make a deformation here. But this is, we'll see that this is exactly has the same structure of the fractional Laplacian from the point of analysis, but this is completely different. And this is just some words about this fractional Laplacian. This is how to find gamma function that we have seen in, uh, in the bifurcation from the disk. We have seen that we bifurcate at some angular velocity connected to the quotient of gamma function. This is how to find them. Uh, so when we look for this uh, modified fraction Laplacian and we want to see and to understand the spectrum, you can compute the spectrum explicitly for this one. And the spectrum is connected to the uh, gamma quotient here. Okay. Uh, and we can use some asymptotics of gamma function and we find that your uh, fraction Laplacian at the, at the leading part is like the standard fraction Laplacian is one over n power alpha. Uh, so from the point of analysis, it's sometimes it's easy to think d minus alpha like an operator of order minus alpha like the fractional uh, Laplacian. So the structure of the linearized operator at the equilibrium, let me, so with this, we can now uh, find explicitly uh, the spectrum of your linearized operator. We can generate the solutions and the solutions are given especially in this form. 
So your solution for the linearized operator at the equilibrium state are given by this uh, superposition. And we have this angular velocity omega n. And omega n, uh, there is n here times something connected to the cauchy gamma function. And if you want to uh, uh, go ahead and understand if the nonlinear problem admits quasi-periodic solution, we should at least uh, prove or check the existence of quasi-periodic solution at the linear level. And here, alpha will be your parameter that you can use in order to generate quasi-periodic solution. So we have no any other parameter in order to find the quasi-periodic solution. We should avoid resonances, and the alpha will be exactly the crucial parameter to. Uh, to avoid resonances. Uh, just some observation, when we, when we look for n equal to zero, in this for uh, omega n, the spectrum is vanishing. So this uh, there is some degeneracy, uh, and n equal to zero is, uh, uh, we can fix it with the space uh, zero average. So this is, we can, we can. And there is a second degeneracy coming from one and minus one. And one and minus one, you see that we can degenerate for any alpha. And we can see, uh, fix it with some on that here. We are in some rotating frame in order to accelerate your angular velocity. And when we take omega zero strictly positive, you can uh, find that the new uh, angular velocity are different from zero. And by this way, we cancel this degeneracy. Uh, so for uh, quasi-periodic, so how, uh, how much time it remains, 10 minutes or? I don't hear you, uh, Marcel. 10 minutes? Uh, you can unmute yourself, maybe, in order to. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I, I think you still have uh, three minutes. Three? But if you, yeah, but if you want more, no problem. Ah, just to state my theorem, at least. <laughs> No, you can, uh, you, can uh, you can talk uh, eight minutes more, no problem. But, but, but 50 minutes or 40 minutes to, to talk? 50, no? Eight, eight minutes, eight minutes. Okay, eight. Okay, we have eight minutes. Okay, so let me go okay. uh, directly to the theorem. Uh, okay, so let me go directly to the theorem. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, our uh, the statement of uh, the theorem is... Uh, this with the Asainia and Masmudi. Uh, so if we fix a finite number of uh, tangential uh, frequencies, so S here, uh, so fix a finite number of frequencies, okay, maybe I should uh, say some words before. I really do not understand what I mean. So this is what we generate at the equilibrium state. And if we select finite numbers of uh, frequencies, we can uh, prove that we generate quasi-periodic solutions, uh, provided that here S is contained this set. So we fix finite numbers, we can generate quasi-periodic solution, provided that your alpha belongs to uh, some contour set, uh, some contour set. And what we want is to see now at the nonlinear level if we can uh, perturb this and uh, check that we have uh, that this uh, uh, linear to uh, torus will survive at the no at the no linear uh, no linear level. So this is my equation. So we fix this. Uh, we we fix this uh, quasi periodic linear solution. So we have finite number of frequencies, and what uh, this is the statement. So if we take uh, an upper bound alpha bar is smaller than one half, and the lower bound alpha is strictly positive. And if we fix your amplitude, so the amplitude the en, your epsilon n, they should be small. Then we can find a contour set, C, contain this range uh, alpha, alpha bar. And this uh, uh, contour set is massive in the sense that when uh, the amplitude epsilon n here or epsilon here is going to zero, will get a uh, full big measure. So alpha bar minus this one. And when we select now your parameter alpha is in this contour set, we can generate a quasi-periodic solution uh, for uh, SQG alpha. So this is randomly in some sense. So, so this is the solution. We can generate quasi-periodic solution for SQG alpha, not for any alpha, but for, for alpha in this contour sets. Okay. 
And uh, this is uh, the description of your solution, uh, almost the linear part, but the linear part is affected by changing the phase here, plus uh, some perturbation here, which is small compared to the linear part. Uh, some comments may be uh, for uh, this restriction. So alpha bar here, uh, we expect that we can go to one, one half, can be explained. Uh, there are some commutator that we are that we can uh, analyze, and we expect that we extend to uh, to uh, to one. But so so just maybe two or three minutes to explore the big the main principle, if you don't mind. Just two or three minutes to give you the main uh, how to, the global proof, how to design the proof. So the proof we use essentially. Uh, uh, different techniques uh, coming from Bertie uh, Baldi Montag Process Works. Uh, uh, we have different. So the first part is to uh, reformulate your system uh, with respect to the action angle coordinates. Uh, and when we do that, we uh, can uh, you can uh, find a suitable change of variable in order to uh, transform your linearized operator so this is the system uh, we can write this system in terms of uh, action angle coordinates and the main thing when we write your operator uh, uh, we should understand on the normal direction we have tangential size the normal size and you should uh, see if you can invert your operator on the normal direction but on the normal direction this is uh, maybe uh, the main delicate point here is that when you linearize you find that uh, this is, uh, we have seen that uh, the linearization at the equilibrium state, this is a Fourier multiplier. But here, when we linearize around the state close to the equilibrium, this is not, uh, the operator will be a quasi-linear perturbation of this uh, Fourier multiplier. So here we, uh, uh, the transport part now is with variable coefficient, the fractional part, is with a variable coefficient and we have the reminder. So the positive part, we have two parts, transport part here, and we have this fractional part, and we should see how to diagonalize in some sense. If you want to invert this operator, the intuitive idea is to see if we can diagonalize this one. And uh, so we have some reducibility techniques to see uh, how to uh, transform this, to diagonalize this into a Fourier multiplier. So we should uh, first, uh, you should first uh, conjugate the, the transport part, and second, you should conjugate the uh, fractional part, and later it remains the reminder. But for that H1, we require KM, uh, KM, uh, uh, KM method, and uh, there are some uh, uh, contour set that we should analyze in order to implement these uh, intuitive ideas. Uh, fortunately, I have no time to give you more explanation. And my time is, uh, uh, is off now, and thank you so much. So I will stop here, and thank you so much for your attention. Okay, you still have two minutes if you want to say something else. I have still two minutes, yeah, I have many two things minutes. to yeah. say. <laughs> I have many <laughs> things to say. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you. So maybe it, it just... Uh, it, just one comment about because when we make a reducibility, we have some standard parts. But the transport part, we can make the reduction into uh, some transport part with a, with a constant coefficient here. And the delicate point is to move to the fractional part. And for the fractional part, in order to reduce to uh, something with constant coefficient, we use an infinite dimensional flow. And this infinite di infinite infinite dimensional flow uh, here uh, will do the job. We can uh, conjugate into a constant coefficient operator, but there is something which is slightly te uh, technical. Uh, when we conjugate your operator by the suitable flow, we get what we want to get here. So the, the principal part of your operator, which is the positive part, is, uh, is, uh, is a Fourier multiplier, but it remains to understand the reminder and the reminder is simply conjugation by the flow of nice reminder the reminder here so we conjugate by the flow and your flow is simply a hyperbolic flow and the flow and if you want to estimate this one we should move to the symbol of class there are some suitable symbol of class that we should introduce in order to implement km techniques we need some time estimates and this time estimates requires 
to measure your operator in terms of symbols. And when we do that, the flow here is not, is not in the class of the symbol. So the flow, there is some instability of your flow. So the flow, there are some oscillation of your flow, and this will uh, prevent the flow to be a pseudo differential operator. And uh, th this was discussed from, uh, by Igorov, but uh, this is some weak discussion by Igorov. We tell you that the main part of the conjugation, this, uh, the main symbol will be, uh, will be on the right class, but we don't know if the reminder will be in the same class. And this is exactly the main technical contribution of this paper is to explore this conjugation and to prove that we stay in the same symbol class. And this requires to uh, introduce a new, a new approach. So I think uh, I should stop now here and thank you a lot for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Taufik, for your very nice talk. So are there questions? So if you want to ask a question, I think you can just uh, unmute your microphone and then you can ask some comments. I think there are some questions, no? Dragos, you want to ask or someone else? No? Dragos? No, Dika. Uh, no, I have no question. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm looking, but uh, I, I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, I think there is no question by now. So thank you very much, Professor Taufik. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you again. Yeah, and so we now have lunch break, and then we uh, hope uh, everyone back here in one hour at 10 past 1 p.m. local time for the last conference of, uh, for the last talk of our conference by Professor Milton Lopes. So see you in one hour.